This is Iowa. This is where I've lived my whole life. This is where my family has lived a very long time. My name is Steve, and I would like to share some information with you about Iowa's natural habitat, the wetlands. Iowa may seem uneventful to the casual observer, but without it, the world would never be the same. Iowa provides food to many people throughout the entire world. Iowa is a premier agricultural state in the United States. As a child, I lived on a farm, and as such, I spent a lot of time outside. I got to see and hear many of the creatures that call Iowa home. As the years went on and I got older, I noticed a decline in the amount of wildlife I was seeing around my home. Many insects and some small mammals, which were once plentiful there, are now scarcely or nowhere to be found at my childhood home. I took it upon myself to research this, and I found that many native Iowa species have population numbers declining. The cause of this is native habitat destruction. Iowa has lost more than 90% of its native habitat, the Iowa wetlands. I share this information with you in hopes that you value Iowa's native wildlife and habitat as I do, and you would help me to work to preserve this for future generations to see and enjoy. For those unfamiliar, I would like to introduce you. This is a wetland. And what a marvelous place it is. The Iowa wetland is an incredibly biodiverse place on par with the Amazon rainforest. Amongst the native residents, you will find the green tree frog, the monarch butterfly, this is the caterpillar form, common pigeons, the leopard frog, many species of bees, many kinds of ducks including the more rare varieties of wood ducks, many species of butterfly and moth, here we see the swallowtail butterfly, eastern cottontail rabbits and jackrabbits both call Iowa their native home. Last but not least, Iowa produces the largest white-tailed deer in the United States. All of these creatures, along with thousands of other organisms and microorganisms, have all called Iowa's wetland their home for centuries. By definition, a wetland consists of water. Unfortunately, there aren't too many places to find water in Iowa other than lakes, streams, and ponds. This leaves many amphibians who are not adapted to these environments without a home. This leaves home for only the green tree frog, a scarce species with declining numbers, the leopard frog, and the American toad, the latter of which spends its entire adult life on land. The toad is not a native species to the Iowa wetland and wreaks havoc on local wildlife. Water was nowhere to be found in my backyard. Amphibians need water to live, reproduce, and flourish. The wetland is full of water and ideal habitat for amphibians. This is where they truly thrive. This is typical Iowa habitat today. Fields and maintenance lawn. No wetland habitat. Some flourish here, such as toads, which are almost entirely terrestrial and only lay their eggs in water. They spend the rest of their lives on land. Leopard frogs have done very well for themselves too, given their generalist traits. Specialist creatures with specialist adaptations are almost nowhere to be found. Tiger salamanders and green tree frogs are both creatures with specialist adaptations and live largely aquatic lifestyles. They are unable to adapt to most of Iowa's new habitat. Tree frogs, salamanders, and snails all rely on water to survive and reproduce. Some have found sanctuary in local waterways. However, many waterways are so heavily polluted that many creatures cannot survive there. Even the wildlife is working against itself. Many exotic, invasive species make life difficult, if not impossible, for many native species. Exotic birds, and toads in particular, hinder the very existence of Iowa's native species. 
Butlands are the most hospitable habitat a frog or a salamander could ask for. Amphibians are a key to any healthy ecosystem. The wetlands benefit more than just local amphibians and other wildlife. The wetlands benefit people as well. In fact, when placed near local waterways, they keep runoff materials such as nitrates and silt from making it in, which would make their way into the local waterway were it not for microbes eating and destroying them. But that's not all the wetland can do. The wetland is also a friend of local farmers as it keeps anchored the precious topsoil which is needed for farming. It keeps the crops healthy and the topsoil in place. Even illegal dumping of animal waste from hog confinement buildings and slaughterhouses is no match for the Iowa wetland. The Iowa wetland will dispose of this the same way it does chemicals and silt. This keeps the local waterways and the wildlife that inhabits them healthy and safe. For example, in comparison to the lake you see behind me, field runoff, illegal dumping, and silt could utterly destroy this natural ecosystem. But a wetland, the harmful materials would only accumulate in a certain area and be buffered and prevented from destroying the rest of the wildlife. Despite the majority of Iowa's wetland being destroyed decades ago, there are those who still work to preserve it for future generations. I sat down with some of these gentlemen to discuss a local project statewide called the CREP Project, C-R-E-P, which looks to further preserve and utilize the Iowa wetlands to their full potential to protect wildlife, the local waterways, and the topsoil, which is essential to farmers to keep the crops healthy and growing. Yeah, I'm John Reiner from Red. Uh, own nine and a half acres that went in on the east side of the project. I'm Brandon Dittman. I work for the Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship in Des Moines, and uh, I am the CREP uh, field coordinator. I'm Fred Lent from North Springs, and I had uh, 24 acres in the project. What is the CREP project? Sure, absolutely. The CREP project uh, started, oh, I think eight or nine years ago or so, um, as an effort to reduce nitrogen um, leaving the state of Iowa. And there's a lot of nitrogen associated with uh, tile lines that drain agricultural fields. CREP stands for Conservation Reserve Enhancement Program. And uh, it's a joint effort between the Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship, um, the uh, USDA FSA, and also local soil and water conservation districts and private landowners like we have with us today. Um, there are currently 95 sites that are either under construction or have been completed in the state of Iowa. And uh, combined, those sites over their lifetime will remove 93,000 tons of nitrate from the tile water that uh, passes through those wetlands. Okay. Um, could you tell us why it's important to remove nitrate from the water? Absolutely. There's been a lot of concern from uh, the, the federal government, EPA, environmental groups, um, other uh, special advocacy folks, and, and just people in general about water quality in the state of Iowa. And I think uh, we've gotten a lot of negative publicity in this state um, as far as, um, you know, what is um, perceived to be uh, doing, uh, what we're perceived to be doing to the, to the Gulf of Mexico and the hypoxia problem there. Um, the dead zone in the Gulf, um, and we've come up with a nutrient reduction strategy in the state, and that strategy is to reduce nitrogen um, leaving the state by 45 percent as well as phosphorus. Um, so what we're attempting to do with these wetlands is strategically locate them in the landscape or on the landscape where they're going to be able to um, intercept a lot of runoff from a large area. We're only going to take a small portion of that area to treat all that water, and that's where the wetland is itself. And the wetlands are proved to be 40 to 90 percent efficient at reducing nitrate passing through them. So you get a lot of bang for the buck. You're not affecting a very large area. 
and you're getting a lot of nitrogen reduction, which is good in terms of uh, people's concerns about water quality in the state. And uh, we hope that if we're able to install enough of these wetlands along with other practices that are also geared at reducing nitrate, that we can have a positive impact on the Gulf hypoxia on the dead zone in the Gulf. So we've got a lot of, a lot of people that we answer to and, and we want to do the right thing by the taxpayers as well as the people that are concerned about water quality. I think it's interesting that you pointed out that um, the field runoff affects more than just, or even just the nitrate runoff affects more than just Iowa there. That's clear down to the Gulf of Mexico. That's a big deal. You know, the Mississippi River is the largest river in the country. Yep. And, you know, a lot of creatures and whatnot, a lot of people use that water. A lot of creatures live in that water. You know, that's, that's a big deal. Yeah, the, the shrimp farmers down in the Gulf are very concerned about it because it's their livelihood. And we've had a lot of interest from that region, um, Louisiana and Mississippi. We've had those folks come up to Iowa and tour what we're doing here. And they're very appreciative of our efforts. And um, the thing to keep in mind is we've either installed or been working on um, 95 sites to date. It would take literally thousands of just these types of wetlands to get at that 45% reduction for the state of Iowa. So we're able to make progress as funding allows, but there's a lot, a lot of work that needs to be done. We're just, we're just barely getting at the tip of it right now. But uh, we're really excited um, to work with um, the individuals in Floyd County, especially these two landowners, um, because we have such good exposure with our site right along Avenue of the Saints. So I'm sure everybody that's been driving by has seen all the construction that, that, that took place there. You guys have probably been getting a lot of questions about it yourselves. And uh, it's good to educate people about what we're doing and why we're doing it. And along those lines, we're going to have some really large uh, 6 foot by 10 foot signs um, at, at these folks' site and also um, at a site a little bit west of their site as well, um, uh, right along Avenue of the Saints. So um, there will be some nice... Uh, some nice signage out there and people will understand what it is they're driving by here pretty soon. We'll get those signs up. I would like to move over to the landowner gentleman here. Um, John, if you would start first. Uh, what attracted you to this project? Well, it was presented to me uh, a year ago or a little more than that. and. Uh, there's been a couple of them going on in Floyd, in Mitchell County, and uh, along the Rock Creek uh, watershed, and uh, so it kind of had some interest in in uh, those kinds of things. I kind of went for it because uh, I owned the largest part of it, but there was a large uh, grass waterway down through there, and that needed some work done on it. And when this project came up, why well, I thought it'd be a good idea just to go ahead and do that. And, I didn't want to monkey around fixing the waterway, so that's I thought this was a better idea. So, Mr. Lent was kind enough to take me out to visit his CREP project, as his land is still under construction. In the middle of January, these people are very efficient and they work very hard at what they do. In just a few months, this waterway will soon be one of Iowa's wetlands. To learn more about the CREP project, I contacted the Water Resources Bureau Chief, Jake Henson, of the Iowa Department of Agriculture in Des Moines. The current wetland is a strategically placed wetland um, designed to remove nitrates from foul drainage. Could you tell me where these nitrates come from? So the purpose of these CREP sites is to keep these chemicals that run off from agricultural fertilizer from getting into the water. That's correct. The, the, the CREP wetland is strategically placed to hold tile drained water for a period of time so it can denitrify before it um, leaves the wetland and goes into uh, downstream waters. 
Could you tell me how um, these nitrates affect the wetland? Because I've read and been told that um, wetlands as a habitat are quite durable and they are able to handle these nitrates. Um, could you elaborate on this? I mean, that's an accurate statement. I mean, the, the wetlands are, especially the crop wetlands, are ideally suited to hold the water so that, that the nitrates, that, the, that they denitrify, uh, basically, uh, into the air uh, as gases. Um, for the amount of time that the water enters the wetland and is stored in the wetland before it leaves, we estimate that between 40 and 90 percent of the nitrate entering the wetland uh, denitrifies through that natural process. How many CREP sites are currently in Iowa? There are 72 that are, under, that are completed and five more that are currently under construction. I hope you have found this video to be informative. Iowa's water, wildlife, and farmland are all very important and should be treated as such. To learn more about this project and to see how you can get involved, please contact the Iowa Department of Agriculture or the Iowa DNR or NRCS offices. That's the Iowa Department of Agriculture, the National Resource Conservation Services of Iowa, and the Iowa Department of Natural Resources. To learn more about the Iowa wetland and its biodiversity, I recommend reading Okaboji Wetlands, A Lesson in Natural History by Professor Michael J. Lanou, or contacting the previously mentioned organizations. Most importantly, if we didn't have willing landowners that wanted to do um, these types of practices, nothing would happen. The legislature can give us all the money in the world, but if we don't have people that, that see value in what we're doing and, and want to participate, um, nothing's going to happen. So thanks to both of you, we greatly appreciate it. And uh, it's a good program, and uh, it's growing, and we're, we're doing as much as we can as funding allows, and we want to continue to do that.